Hey guys, today I'm gonna do a quick walkthrough on a recent program I've made, a tic-tac-toe game done in Windows form. I'm almost ecstatic about the end result considering I've approached it with uh, basically zero prior experience in uh, .NET and C-Sharp. But must say that uh, to get me going I've used a small YouTube tutorial uh, for which I'll post the link in my video description because it's uh, quite informative about the basic stuff. Uh, of course, I've uh, deviated and added my own touches and in the process of this I've learned a bit about uh, C-sharp objects, containers, a few functions, uh, various uses of the message box and of course uh, how to deal with uh, Windows form. Uh, but uh, like they say, talk is cheap so uh, let's see it in action. So this is the form I'm working with. I'm gonna do a quick run and then uh, talk about uh, it a little bit more. Okay, so this is our program. Uh, we see a nice icon, a nice title, a few menus here, but of course nobody will uh, bother to check them out first. A uh, few labels, one indicating uh, the user, one the best player, which in our case will be uh, a small AI function. Another label here which will uh, indicate the number of times uh, we had a draw. And of course the nine buttons which uh, represents our uh, game table. So uh, let's push some buttons. This is a basic um, tic-tac-toe game. So the user has uh, the first move. It will uh, uh, be the one with uh, the axis and the... Uh, then the other player, which in our case is uh, an AI, will have the O's. So I put an uh, X here, O, X, O, uh, didn't have quite a good strategy, uh, X, O, X, and I've won. Mm, yeah, wanna test your luck again. So uh, I've been lucky to, to be the AI. Uh, if I press cancel, nothing happens. I uh, still see the game table, I see uh, the moves, I then gonna try the menus here, I have a new menu, a new game, great, uh, that reset the game table, so let's try a new game, I've won again, damn I good, uh, I've won, wanna test your luck again, okay. So that works great, a new game, I'm just gonna randomly uh, push some buttons and what do you know, I've lost, was expected really, yeah of course, um, let's, I don't know, let's, uh, let's close that, so again uh, nothing happens, we still gonna see the game table, let's try another, boot, uh, another button here, uh, reset scores, uh, so sorry for that. As you can see, um, the scores are now 2 to 1 for me, for the user. Uh, pressing reset scores will make all the scores 0, yeah, including draws. Uh, so let's play another game. Okay, okay, okay. I've won again. Okay. Uh, so I've pressed new game, I've pressed uh, scores. The exit uh, will be the last uh, to press. Uh, guess I've won again. Um, there are uh, two other uh, buttons here in the help uh, menu. Rules. So we have here uh, the basic rules for uh, uh, a basic uh, normal uh, tic-tac-toe game. And then uh, we have uh, an about section which says by me, check sources on GitHub. Uh, yeah, let's check sources on GitHub. Okay, so uh, this works great. Um, so uh, this is uh, pretty much all the current functionality of this program. Uh, I can exit this now and I can um, show you how each uh, buttons, how each button and labels 
are uh, placed. Uh, you've uh, you've seen the the menu buttons. They are obvious. Uh, we also have uh, two, three, five, uh, seven labels and nine buttons. The buttons represent, of course, the uh, playing table. And the labels one uh, will refer to the user, one to the one to the other player, which in our case is is a simple function which will just uh, place a no on a randomly available uh, space here, and another uh, button which will indicate uh, the draws. Of course, we need uh, three uh, three other labels which will indicate uh, the number of times the user won, the number of times uh, the other player won. And the number of times there was a draw. Also, must mention that as a nice finishing touch for this program, I've used uh, my own custom icon. Yeah, uh, this I've made on a website I found on uh, the net. Uh, yeah, here it is, favicon.cc. I'll also put uh, the link for this in my video description. You can uh, quickly create a new favicon, yeah, that's their uh, trademark apparently. Import an image to be used as an icon, uh, see latest, uh, etc. Yes, yeah, so you can, uh, I, for example, I've just uh, drawn here something, yeah, so let's say this should be an icon, yeah. Okay, and then you can uh, download your icon and use it wherever you like. So uh, let's get back to our program. Uh, yes, I've uh, shown you pretty much all of the interface. Uh, now let's see the underlying code. Okay, so uh, for this program, I'm gonna need a ball variable to indicate whether or not it is the user turn. An int variable to uh, represent the turn count, 0 to 9. Uh, three int variables uh, to keep the user score, the AI score and the number of draws. And another ball variable um, which will uh, be used as a condition in the new game function and the reset scores function. We'll talk uh, about it a little bit more a little bit later. So uh, let's see the functions. The primary function for our program is uh, button click. Uh, I'm gonna quickly start the program so we have a live example. Okay, let's put this here. So um, this function will uh, record every time the user presses a button. Okay, that button will be uh, received in this function as a generic object. Into that button, uh, that function will uh, print an X, uh, then we'll uh, change the user turn, we'll disable the button so the user uh, can't change the recorded state, can't make any change to this button, yeah, so uh, these buttons are disabled, these are not. Uh, increase, of course, uh, the turn count because we made um, a choice, we made a move. And then, if the turn count is uh, at least 5, we're gonna check for a winner. If the turn count is uh, not bigger than 5, or if uh, we don't have a winner, uh, we're gonna call the uh, Flower Power AI. This is the name of the function uh, uh, which will uh, put this O's here, the, let's say, AI function. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna talk about that function a little bit later. First I'm gonna talk about the check for winner function. This function uh, of course needs a ball variable to know, uh, to indicate whether or not we have a winner. And it will check every horizontal line, vertical line or, diag or diagonal line to see if we have uh, the exact same text and if all the buttons on, the, on that line, on that checked line are disabled so uh, they have uh, an input at runtime. Yeah, uh, if we have a winner, uh, this function will uh, first disable all the buttons. Yeah, so the user can continue to play. We will not be able to modify any uh, buttons here. 
and then print an appropriate message uh, depending on uh, who won or uh, if it was a draw. So uh, I guess I can uh, show it. So uh, let's see. Okay, so I've lost. Yeah. Uh, so this is the message shown uh, where the user lost. Um, another message uh, when the user won. And another message when there, is, there was a draw. You can see that uh, if the user uh, presses OK on, the, on this dialog, yeah, this dialog uh, will uh, pretty much ask if the user wants to play another game. So if he uh, presses OK, we're gonna reset the buttons and turns. Uh, I'm gonna show it quickly uh, that function. Or if the user uh, will not press OK, if he, if he will uh, press cancel or will just uh, close this uh, window, we will update the cancel new game um, ball variable. Again, I'm gonna show you why we need that, but uh, a little bit later. So, uh, okay, so for uh, for now, we'll just uh, close this window. Uh, so I've said that uh, when uh, we have a, a winner, the first thing this function does is to disable all buttons. Uh, for this, uh, it will call this helper function, which will check every button and uh, will disable it. Then, uh, if the user will press OK on uh, on that uh, uh, message box, it will reset the buttons and turns. What that means? Uh, that means that uh, it will reset all these buttons, which are now disabled. Will also uh, uh, reset the user turn, which is a ball variable. It will be turned to true, so the user will always be first. Of course, the count will uh, need will need to be reset to zero, and the cancel new game ball variable will be um, reset to false. Yeah. So after all this, uh, I guess I can show you the flower power AI function. Named it so because it uh, doesn't really care about winning. Yes. So. Uh, what this function does is uh, to first construct the pool of available spaces. Yeah, it will uh, look uh, for how many buttons are enabled, so uh, they are still available, still open to hold an X or a no. Uh, those buttons will be stored on a list. Yeah, available spaces uh, list, uh, from which we will uh, select. A random one, yeah, and then uh, do the usual. Uh, we're gonna print an O into uh, that selected button. We're gonna change uh, the turn. We're gonna disable that button. Uh, I can uh, uh, call any game for that. So uh, pr um, print an O, uh, change the user turn, disable the button. Yes, yeah, so. This button is disabled. Uh, of course, increase the user count. And if um, the AI, this function, could have made three moves, check for a winner. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, let's finish this. Let's close this window. Okay, so now I'm, now I'm going to show you the um, tool strip menu items, the functions for this. Uh, buttons. First we're gonna talk about the new game menu, new game button. As you can see this is where um, I use that ball uh, variable as a condition. We check whether or not uh, the user have uh, cancelled uh, have cancelled that message box. I'm gonna uh, do a quick game. So, okay. It will test whether or not the user pressed cancel or close this window. Um, so, it will know whether or not to 
ask this message or not because as you'll see if we now press a new game we are asked uh, we are uh, warned that uh, this will end our current game but uh, if we pressed cancelled here and then we we ask for a new game we are uh, not greeted with this message box yeah and then of course will uh, this function will call the reset buttons and turns function uh, basically the same functionality um, is for the reset scores menu yes yeah, so uh, it will uh, print the, uh, it will uh, show this warning or not uh, depending on again this uh, cancelled uh, new game variable so if you have uh, cancelled a new game here yeah, and then press reset scores we will not be greeted by that uh, warning yeah uh, then of course if uh, if you wanna reset the scores this function will uh, yeah so let me do this first new game no uh, do a quick game okay so we have one here and now we're gonna reset the scores yeah zero here now yeah it will uh, reset the scores the user score the AI score the draws yeah all these three it will then print zero into all these boxes yeah when uh, we normally start this uh, program uh, we don't have any uh, any number here but if we reset the scores we're gonna have zero I don't I I think this is a uh, this is just a strong indicator that the user indeed uh, pressed reset scores and indeed the program uh, resetted the scores appropriately okay. so uh, after the uh, new game is reset uh, and the reset scores we of course have this menu this uh, menu button exit which will just uh, uh, call application exit so it will uh, close our program of course after um, giving us uh, this warning yeah. so this works great and then we have another uh, menu the help menu uh, let's just uh, okay uh, so the help menu will have uh, two functions uh, this rules which will just uh, show a message box containing these uh, basic tic-tac-toe rules and uh, a button an ok button and then we'll have another function about tic-tac-toe which will say the name of the author and we'll ask the user if uh, he wants to check the sources on github I've uh, already did that you see that uh, this works great so uh, this pretty much is the uh, quick overview of my first uh, foray into uh, .NET and uh, C Sharp with uh, nice nice program. I uh, really like the end result, and I'm uh, quite proud of it. Hope you like it also. As usual, you'll find uh, a link to the sources in the this video description. Until next time. Take care guys, bye.